Well, it's Thursday. And if you're saying, wait a minute, no, it's not, it's Friday. That's because it's Thursday here, it's Friday where you are. Oh, I know. I know. So, if you're watching this, that means that I'm busy getting a shot in my arm right now for the uh, Pfizer COVID vaccine. And I'm super duper excited about it. <sighs> it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. I'm getting the first shot, but because uh, the current administration uh, is pushing so hard to finally get everybody vaccinated, it's going to happen a lot sooner than I was expecting it, uh, which is nice. And that's true nationally and also for here in Colorado. And they're, they're really, really, really pushing to make it happen. Um, so as soon as we get all of our vaccinations, man, we are free over well over a year of quarantining and avoiding everybody and staying away from everything. And that's all going to end. And I'm looking forward to us being able to get back out again and doing stuff. And, um, you know, even Sarah Palin says, go out and get your COVID-19 vaccine. Do it. Do it it. Um, so I'm excited. So I, I'm pre-recording this video to, and I'll set it to upload the exact moment I'm getting my shot. Uh, people who did complain about noise, extra noise running around, buddy, it is what it is. They were quiet all afternoon, like, like a library, uh, right up until the few minutes before I started, um, getting ready to record. Wow. April 1st, dude's running in shorts and a cutoff t-shirt. <laughs> but anyway, so now they're screaming and I'm making a video. Okay. Oh, wrist check. Okay, wrist check. Oh, I think the volume on this thing's a little high, so I'm gonna have to speak quietly. Anyway, wearing my Lori Hydra. Love it. Put this on a Oh, I don't know. Some strap I found somewhere. I like the, the brown and the blue together. I think it looks nice. And the white stitching picks up the dial. But it's just a lovely watch. Perfect size. Nice and low. Attractive to look at. Accurate. Legible. Cleanly designed. I'm a big fan. And we're back. Okay. Jonathan Chow 5, first. Okay, you were first. Now what? I, 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 I don't understand it. I've seen it for many years. Waste of everybody's time. I guess it gives the guy a thrill. Congratulations. You were first. Uh, the dog wants it. <clears throat> Come on, dingle butt. Okay. <sighs> Next question. Colton Prater. Do you get tired of working on watches? I know I do. Uh, uh, Colton is a, is a young uh, aspiring watch person. Uh, I believe he's all 14 years old. Good to start working on stuff. Um, Colton, no. I do not ever get tired of watches, um, of working on them, looking at them, any of that, any of, why are, what are you doing? Kraken's trying to fight a, a guitar piece. I have no idea what, what are you doing? Um, I never, I never get tired of it. If I had my druthers, if I didn't have to sleep, if I wasn't physically restrained from doing so by circumstances in life and children and being busy, I would probably work 24 hours a day just on watches. I, I really enjoy working on watches. I work on watches uh, as a job, as a hobby. I work on watches to relax from working on watches. My list of watches I want to restore is huge. And every single time I come across them, I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, I wish I had time to work on that. Like, for example, you, this watch isn't running because I haven't serviced it yet. This is a Titus tuning fork. It uses um, a licensed movement design for from the original, the real Bulova. Am I bleeding? Did she get me? I don't think she did. She get me? Am I bleeding? I can't tell. 
Did you get me? Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, anyway. So Titus uses a tuning fork movement, um, just like uh, uh, under license from Omega. Omega was really big into the whole tuning fork thing, right? In the especially in the like the 50s and 60s, they were really big into it. By the time the 70s rolled around, Omega had kind of gone away from doing that kind of stuff. They weren't really working with this, using this bull of a design. And so what Omega did is they sold off basically their a huge supply of unfinished watches, the F300 um, watches, their dress watches and divers and stuff. And they sold it to Titus um, or whatever this company is. Um, and Titus uh, started producing watches. There are some Titus watches. If you look for them and you're careful and you know what you're looking for, you can get a mid 70s Titus watch that is, except for the branding, is an Omega. Uh, this is not one of them. A lot of the Tituses you see online are like dress watches. Um, they all are new old stock and they have been destroyed internally by battery leaks coming from a dude in Pakistan. This is not one of those. This I found on eBay. This came from the United States of America. And this thing has a, this thing has a beautiful Omega designed and I believe Omega built um, tuning fork movement in it and it runs like a dream. Look at that original loom. Look at that beautiful tritium loom. Definitely runs, I need to service it. I'd love to service that. I wanna wear this watch. Great quality. Like there's no plastic in this thing. Literally there is, there might be a little in the two different coil segments, but beyond that it's all metal. Even the chapter ring on this is anodized metal. This was this was a nice watch. I'm gonna service that if I'm looking forward to that. I desperately want to service this beautiful blade King Seiko um, there's all kinds of different stuff I really really want to service this King Seiko hand winder gold medallion a beautiful piece yeah, it's 4502 it was someone's retirement watch in Japan I'd love to really fix that and of course I have my Bellmatic that I was talking about. There it is. So I want to set aside time to restore this thing. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be awesome. I haven't done much of anything with it. Uh, we can look at it for a second if you want, seeing as I was waiting for this to come in. Yeah, here's that Bellmatic. It's, it's scratched up and it wasn't treated particularly nicely, but the case lines are all there. And I should be able to polish those up. You can see the brushing is still here. The loom is not bad. Actually, the dial's not bad. Even the hand loom is a little damaged there, but I might, I should be able to save it. This is the wrong crystal that they put in, and they glued it in place, which is ridiculous, but the movement, the movement's okay. Um, I haven't, when you have sort of a pervasive fog of moisture inside a watch, it's not good. And you can see it's got lots of plating damage on the movement and I mean, it runs, it's not real happy about it. I, I, I really am strongly considering simply replacing the movement rather than servicing this original one, just because the kind of damage you can get inside these movements with this kind of abuse, it's you you can end up with a compromised final product, which I really don't want. We'll see. I just think it's neat. I'd be very curious to see if it was... I want to know more about this model and, and, and why it looks the way it looks. I, I, I really would like to know more. Why they're rare and who used them. Uh, the next question was Neil Sengupta, and it was uh, he made the comment on the uh, the eight part series that I broke the restoration. I broke the seven five, the seven five four six versus seven C four three seven five. My brain. that video instead of doing one giant giant long video I said well you know it makes it kind of hard to watch 
And so I just, I just split it up. And I think it was a well-received, good idea. It was more work to set the videos up, but I think it's more accessible and people can just look at the chunks that they're interested in. It was a lot of fun doing those. I never showed the after. This, there's the 7C. I'm sorry, the 7548-7000 JDM 150 meter diver. There it is. Beautiful, fully restored. It's all back together on its original weird rear strap. I am going to be selling this watch. Ooh, it's a nice one too. I'm going to be selling this watch. I just haven't made time to put it on the website. Um, five o'clock. Okay. And here is that 7C. The 7C that was in that video is right here. The, uh, I left the dial alone, that's as it was. Whatever the paint was that that old watch dude used on this stuff, I don't know what it is. Um, acetone won't touch it, thinner won't touch it, um, uh, turpentine won't touch it. Uh, I used non-acetone uh, remover, that didn't do anything. Thinner didn't work. The only thing I didn't try was like paint stripper, which I'm not getting anywhere near this. So I'm just gonna leave it. Looking closely at the dial, I can tell that the loom underneath there is utterly black. So the handset was equally badly done, but the anodized black surface of the hands was intact. So what I did, all that other, that gunk that he put all over it, I just, it literally, it just came off. I could touch it with a sharpened piece of pegwood and it just came off. And the, so I very carefully restored the white paint and then reloomed. And I made the loom glow so it can actually work. But this watch is running great. All there, it's all new seals, all new crystals, everything else like this. And this watch is also going to be for sale because I already have a 7C for three of this exact model. And I already have one of this exact model. And this, the one I have like this is from a friend. So, you know, I don't keep duplicates and I'm gonna keep a watch that came from a friend of mine. So. These are both going to be available. I just need to find time to do it. But it was very fun. There were a lot of comments on that video expressing appreciation. One person, uh, the, the immortal and amazing Aaron Costello of Cobra Jet 25 fame, he, he disagrees with me, which is, which is perfectly fine. Um, I am very happy that he weighed in on that. I, I've never claimed to be 100% right. Uh, I'm sure that he doesn't claim to be 100% right either. And everybody has their opinions. I stand by my personal conclusion, which is that the 754X family is higher end um, and a nicer movement overall in basically every single possible way over the 7Cs. 7C movements are designed to run for a long time without needing maintenance and that they're cheap enough to make from Seiko's perspective that they don't even really supply spare parts anymore. That if you blow a movement, one of those things, if it goes wrong, even if the accuracy drops off, they're just going to replace the movement. Because as Aaron said, they, I'm sure they paid off the R and D and production stuff behind the seven C movement 30 years ago. So it, at this point they can just turn on the machine and make more of them because it's all done by robots anyway. So, I mean, it's a cost-benefit analysis, and Seiko, as every giant company, wants to get the maximum of milk with the minimum of moo. I, but I stand by my conclusions. I really do. But that's not to say that the seven C's, the seven C is not a good movement. It's a great movement, actually. It's, it's amazing how accurate the darn things are, and it doesn't need that variable trimmer. I mean, I, I. I rebuilt these watches and set them to the time, to the second, each one. And this one is, I dialed this one in. That's not bad. That's not bad. They're, they're very good movements. And uh, I have my own special one that I really like. There it is. So they're both going to be available. Completely rebuilt, fully serviced. You saw it. Um, all new seals, brand new crystal, uh, timed if applicable, blah, 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 ready to go. 
Aaron Costello, speaking of Cobra Jet 25, um, he provided me some great information for the 7548 battery strap washer. So you have the battery strap washer goes across and has that sort of, that thickish washer there that has a beveled internal surface on one side. Uh, part number for the 7548 battery strap washer 0027508, that number again. 0027508. You cannot order new OEM because they're they stopped making those in 1987, 88, something like that. But there are aftermarket ones on eBay that work just fine. Good to know. Thank you, Aaron Costello. Okay, next question. Kyle Speshuk. Speshuk? Speshock? Kyle, I hope I got that right at one of those attempts. Any watch sleuths out there know where I could source a crystal for the 7018-8000? I've been searching documentation, but have been seeing conflicting info. An original Seiko maintenance guide from the 1970s lists a part number of 310T35AN, but I can't seem to find one anywhere. I also noticed that the 7016-8000-8001 appears to have the same case. Maybe a crystal for that model would fit. Um, Seiko had no problems whatsoever generating a one-off crystal for something. Sometimes, sometimes, you can get one that will move from one case to another. They would never really list it, and typically they would have... Um, they used to have lists of subs, you know, substitutes that would work. It's a pretty, that model, particularly as a JDM only model, they didn't make a lot of them. Uh, I, they were, as far as I know, they were never imported into the United States. Um, and, you know, I there are a good number of crystals that exist only for one model. I don't believe this is one, but that's, it's tough. I don't know, maybe, maybe Mr. Aaron Costello, a.k.a. Cobra Jet 25, can tell us about it. Next one. You ready? Nicholas Restrepo. Uh, you read us all the time. We talk to you all the time. Uh, I know that you're a longtime viewer, and I know that you're a one-time customer. I think you would have been more than one. Are you sure? Anyway, I wanted to know if you have any experience with the high-accuracy quartz watches that Seiko made in the 70s, i.e. Grand Quartz, King Quartz, Superior, VFA, etc., I don't think you've ever featured any of them on the channel before. I believe these are the best kept secrets in the hobby. Grand Seiko level construction and finish for a fraction of the price if you know where to find them. Oh man, you bet. You bet. I, I'm, I've fiddled with them. I played with them over the years. Only very recently have I gotten really interested in these other things. The dress watches specifically was not my thing and now I'm kind of actually into it. And I was more into mechanical watches, but these early high quality quartz ones, they are fantastic. The 3803 movements are really, really good. Um, all their early stuff is just, is magnificent like that. I mean, at that time they were producing a bewildering, bewildering array of different high, higher and high, high accuracy quartz movements. Um, and they, there's just a ton of them. Some of them are pretty obscure, like the, the, the seven eight one three movements are, they're just sort of a dress. Oh, Kraken, Kraken, you are getting yourself into trouble. <laughs> I know, I know. It's not a place for you to be right now. You're gonna fall down if you if you try to stay up there. You wanna see her? Well, no, she's been seeing me. She wanted to settle down there so she could look at me. Ow. Yeah, I know. She got me. Gonna, it's gonna fail. Is it going to fail me? You're an idiot. Oh my God, you're stupid. <laughs> but look at how happy she is. <laughs> Do you get to see me? <gasps> Are you looking at me now? We have a giant wool blanket slung over a very old uh, high back wing chair. And Kraken likes to sleep in the wing chair underneath the sort of like in a tent. So it's a nice dark place. Now, because I'm sitting here and she likes keeping an eye on me, she's sitting on top of the wing back chair, on top of the blanket that's across the wings, looking at me, but it was, uh, the blanket was going to get dropped down. She's still looking kind of shifty. I think she doesn't feel secure in her position. What in the heck was I talking about? Oh yeah, those, those, I tell you, I really am digging them. I really am. Like, there are certain, there are certain things that, 
sorry. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there are certain things like there's a, I have a 7123 dress watch and I posted about it on Instagram. It used to belong to a, a family friend, uh, actually a World War II veteran who knew me from the, basically being a baby. And he, it was given to me after he died. Um, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful watch and has a snowflake dial and everything here. I'll insert a picture. Yeah, these fine quartzes. This is the the watch that came to me from my our family friend. He was a World War II vet. He was at Normandy. Uh, not on D-Day, but some days later. He was, uh, he was a, f as far as I understand it, he was a forward observer, which means he's the guy who was saying, okay, he was directing fire on the, from the artillery, which is how the United States military got things done back then. You know, it's, it's great if you're German machine gun crew and you're trained to have high rates of fire directed at a certain point, but if you can't even see your enemy and they're far enough away and they can still drop lots of ordnance right in your head, then I don't think your machine gun tech is going to help. 700 rounds a minute doesn't do much against a howitzer. But in any case, he lived through it and he came home. He was an engineer and this was one of his watches. This is a 7123 uh, 8149. Look at the look at the subtle snowflake on that dial. And the beautiful original loom, all the case finishing, very slim watches. Look at the little notes there. Whoop, whoop. So this isn't one of those super high-end quartzes from that time period, but in a way it kind of is. If I can get a hold of one of the 7143 circuits, this is a 7123, I can make this thing a high accuracy quartz. It's the original bracelet and everything else. In fact, I haven't even cleaned this. All I did was put a battery in it, packed it away. I put a battery in it recently, like a couple, three days ago, and it's been running, but I'm going to unplug it in and get it uh, get it cleaned up at some point. Joe is a hell of a guy. He owned an extraordinarily valuable 1963 Ferrari uh, that he bought from the widow in like the 60s. And um, he had it all the way up to the end. Only Ferrari I've ever sat in. Anyway, really nice quality. And the cool thing is, and in part I know this because of Ryan Walters uh, down there in Florida, because he asked me about this and I did research. The 7123 is a, basically it's an all metal quartz movement that has, yes, that's sliding out from underneath your butt. Logic, not a cat strong suit. Um, the 7123 is a basic movement, but it's all metal. It's got two jewels. It has, um, the circuit is interesting because it's made of sort of a fibrous composite material, like a, like almost like a heavy cardboard or something. It's interesting. But there's another version. There's a, a, there's a grand quartz version called the 7143. The only difference being is that the circuit is different. The circuit, everything else is exactly the same, but the circuit is different and it has temperature compensation on it. And that's enough to move that watch from being a, a, a nice looking watch with a beautiful like snowflake dial to being hack, basically high accuracy quartz. And there's a ton of stuff out there and a lot of people don't know about it. I'd love to get one of the superiors, the one with the the, the one that model the Seiko Superior and it's got the applied metal superior on the dial. It's they're just really cool. A lot of those early quartz movements are great. Um the 3803s are they're a beautifully made movement. They have an impeller jewel uh, on a center on a center wheel, which is kind of a Bulova technology. They just it's really cool. It's cool. And they they make they really went they swung for the fences and then you know, in terms of quality and what they could put out. And then everybody decided that quartz equaled garbage. And there, even today, you can get, just as you say, um, you know, Grand Seiko level quality in terms of the movements and the, the stuff for really just not a lot of money. And they're amazing values. They are amazing values. If you get, yeah, and if you get some of the, some like the 9000 series dress watches, they are... Um, fantastically accurate. Okay. Edith Calderon. Hi, Spencer. Do you know the history of Seiko quartz movements? I always see Seiko SQ, QZ, QR, and other variations. Just want to ask what they mean. 
I don't know nearly as much as I should. I used to have a QR. I used to have a QZ, I believe. Seiko SQ, that just means Seiko Quartz. And that's that's everywhere. That's all over the place. Um, you see the Seiko Quartz thing on, on any kind of world versions. I don't believe it was ever really used inside Japan. JDM models, like, like this one here, don't have the SQ on them. But that's they're different than QZ and QR, which are some one of Seiko's sort of faux micro brand kind of setups, which they love to do. You know, Seahorse and Sea Lion and uh, Alpinist and all these other like sub brands that aren't really sub brands, and they do it to kind of I think differentiate their production line and generate sales. Um, but they're great. Soul Brook. I don't know what I like better, pictures of pets and loved ones, or watching Spencer's thoughts change in track in mid-sentence squirrel. Um, he is, of course, referring to the movie Up, uh, where the dogs have translators, and they will be issuing some dire threat, and then they will see a, they will see a squirrel or something, and everything stops. It's, it's Actually, it's a very clever piece of comic relief. Uh, the rest of the movie, I don't ever need to watch again because it just wants to rip your heart out of your chest. But the dogs seeing squirrels, that was cool. Keith Donnelly, mail call, and another Bellmatic project on the way. Great start to my week. Look forward to seeing that 4006 6071, one of the later models that came out towards the end of the Bell production, 1966 to 1978. A very unusual, rare variant. Great find. Well, thank you. I knew that they were uncommon, and I it kind of stuck in my head that they were uncommon, and then I literally, I forgot about it until I happened to drift across this one. It's funny, I think of Bells as being big, as being big and kind of, but this actually, this feels kind of petite. It's cool. It's got some water damage, some moisture damage, not water damage, but it's just, this one looked kind of a hard life, so... I'm really going to have to go through it. I, this movement, I think, is pretty rough. And as I said, I, th I am considering making it a sleeper and upgunning it to 28 joules under the hood rather than the 17 joules that this is here. Really, really swing for the fences. But we'll see. We'll see. CMB, thanks for the reply on the Bellmatic date window. Much appreciated. I have the white dial black numeral version of your new incoming Bellmatic, and I'm also looking for a black dial version. As you say, they are like comets, rare and hard to catch. If anybody really knows how rare 4006-6071s are, let me know. I'm curious. I'm curious about these, because one of the things I did notice, there's another model out there that is basically the same exact thing. It's of the 4006-6070, not 71s. It's usually region code. The one, a lot of people say, some people say, well, at least I know I say, that one could be related to sales to the U.S. military. There's no, it's not for sure about that at all, but there's a lot of anecdotal evidence suggesting that. But the 4006 6070 is this case, but it has a civilian style, regular old Palmatic dial. And Seiko did do that. They would sometimes make the civilian version and the military version, and they would carry the same casing number. We see this with the 7005 Mac V SOGs. Um, we see it also actually with the 6619s, the first gen ones, though those were never officially put out. I don't know, who knows? <sighs> Jim Canataro. Last question. We had a blizzard when I did that last one. Holy hell, that's a lot of snow. Just went to Flagstaff and saw about 14 new inches, but damn, you guys buried you, trees down, branches down. Uh, there's still piles of snow out in the street, and yet it's so warm. Like that dude, he's biking with his dog in shorts in a t-shirt, and he's wearing a hat and sunglasses. That's life here in Colorado. All right, well, that's it. So by this time, by the time you're finished watching this, I will have... Um, gotten my shot and hopefully I will be home and hopefully I'll feel great and I can start working on one of these watches. I don't know. What's it going to be? It's going to be the Bellmatic. I'd love to work on the Bellmatic. I've been waiting forever to work on this one with this blade case. Gosh, it's so pretty. Mm-hmm. 
this beautiful Handwinder King Seiko 4502. Or, or my Titus tuning fork. You believe this watch? It was on eBay. This is completely original. I haven't touched it. Whoever owned it wore it for a relatively short amount of time and then put it away. It's just wild. I got this for $49 on eBay. $49. The coils alone, this thing has two coils. If you want to, if you can find the coils, they're usually about 150 bucks a piece and you need two of them. This is going to be a nice watch. That's uh, going to be a keeper. I love these 70s TV dials. Okay, that's it. Folks, I will see you later. And right now I'm going to take this thing off and I'm going to take a picture of Smackadelic. Smackopotamus Rex over there. Oh, yes, you're blinking at me. I blink at you too because I love you so much. Smackies. I'm glad to have you here. She's like, why are you talking to me? Bye, folks.